is folks this is the uh, last departure of the day out of the northern runway we are on runway 27 right three o'clock every day look at that 301 um, these guys it's crazy how how on the ball they are with their their runway switch operations and how sort of like on time they are every single day with a dad and now you'll see a big left bank i think the clouds are around about 2000 feet something like that you can probably feel the wind something like that anyway already they start to come in I'm gonna jump on this one um, hey folks, how are you doing um, I hope that um, our tweet was seen by the three uh, gift doors um, yesterday after we went after we literally pulled the plug um, I did put a tweet out just to say obviously thank you to everybody who has gifted and also all our new members and subscribers and so on and so forth but um, but uh, importantly the uh, the three folks who gifted quite heavily at the end of the show yesterday I'm um, oh, oh, sorry on Monday <laughs> Malcolm Clinton, Springbok, uh, yeah, that's what, Malcolm Clinton, uh, Caroline Teague and Springbok 295 gifting um, heavily. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, how are you doing? How's your Wednesday going? You know what? I really said something. It's, I, I'm still, I'm still out. I'm still out. My head's still above the clouds. because of the bank holiday in it and that's that's uh, <laughs> yeah yeah that's what I've got to give myself a break on clean car clinic gifted a membership thank you very much indeed first in this afternoon not really battling anything at the moment from Ibiza it's all going off on this plane <laughs> please remain in your seats positioning is it what this one that's a p flight cut yeah 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 so interesting so this is probably not got any passengers on ladies and gentlemen sort of hang in there direct westerly and easterly so westerly sorry it's coming from the east the wind's coming from the west So we might get a little bit of ground effect, sort of like, uh, well I call it that anyway, where the wind rushes along the runway. Nicely done. Oh, finesse, sir or madam. Big round of applause there uh, for that positioning flight. Obviously very light as well, look. healthy stack forming already of course the uh, it's 
it's great, uh, great again to get um, Capo Chris on the show on Monday. He said he used manual thrust all the way down, which is really cool. So what he's basically saying is that at this point, rather than auto throttles, he's using um, manual thrust. He prefers to fly the aeroplane. Um, a lot of pilots that I've talked to do like it that way. They're not a big fan of auto land and all that kind of malarkey. Um, there you go, you see there's a little bit of high speed wind travelling underneath the aeroplane. Possibly, I don't know if it makes it a little bit more difficult to sort of like uh, retard, if you see what I mean, in terms of dropping the power off. Behind it is Cafe Pacific's 350. You might see plumes of uh, black soot coming out the back of those engines. Sounds worse than what it is. It is literally just, um, you know, um, the engine's being powered up to maintain. Uh, the correct speed. And if he's watching, because he did phone his, um, his one of his engineers the other day, or one of his people said, are you watching? Chris Mild Moyles was uh, contacting his, his, um, one of his media team said, are you watching? So a uh, big shout out to you. on Radio X tomorrow morning folks. Mr. Miles. Oh here we go. Here we go. Go on son. In your own time. Oh he's running it long. Long landing. Nice. Oh skills. That's a proper floater that one is. Look he's like yeah nah. Oh here we go. Wait until he's out of earshot so I can give it a barrel load of reverser. But uh, yeah, that was a very long landing. <laughs> Possibly even the onboard systems. Um, they do warn the pilots once they get to a certain point. There are markers on the runway. Um, there are different markers on the runway. And he put it, I think it's a thousand foot mark, is, uh, is just over here. That's the thousand foot mark, I think. The keys. I know that there was, I, I did, I was led to believe that there were still two that were um, untouched. Oh, one air! Oh, sorry, one world, I'm thinking of. They're in Victorville. Oh, mate, they haven't gone bust already, have they? No, mate. Unless they're going for maintenance, but two of them?
Royal Chiazzini Why I? It's got its cheddy cheese on this painting You guys Through through piece on um, a very brief piece on uh, Rolls-Royce on uh, one of the terrestrial channels yesterday um, and, and it was it was actually quite a recent piece as well because uh, he was um, being interviewed right out right inside the test cell for the ultra fan and boy oh boy man I mean the thing is that when you look at those when you look at the engine of the uh, the the um, the ultra fan it's a beautiful thing i mean the work of art you know the the fan blades themselves are sort of like they belong in a bleeding gallery rather than on a jet plane um but i have a feeling we might see we might see um pinky today because it seems to be some sort of like you know some wildlife over there little um with their you know <laughs> with his goslings um yes yeah, tad windy there's your windsock, folks. Somewhere down there. There it is. So it's blowing straight at them, which kind of um, makes it quite interesting, doesn't it? Because you're trying to sort of like maintain speed. It's your friend, of course, at that very last moment where they go for retard, drop the plane. And he's just driven it straight in. Oh, easy, easy. <laughs> just gotta stay uh, nice and calm, haven't you? Everything's fine. I mean, I, I did say the other day about um, about pilots and how things are a lot easier today than they were back in the old days. You know, I mean, uh, I've spoken to many, many mature pilots who are um, somewhat concerned about the future of, uh, of, 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 of of piloting in terms of. Uh, the fact that um, the, the 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 more mature pilots were uh, have come, some of them from a generation of of learning to fly um, kind of manually, if you see what I mean. Um, whereas nowadays, uh, a lot of the stuff is done by instruments. But regardless of that, right now, this is where they really sort of like hone their skills, isn't it? So you might see a pilot here where they like might throw them in the simulator uh, just to refresh them on windy approaches but so far it's all good See what I mean? drops it straight on the thousand foot mark I think. Yeah, piano key. Sorry, yeah, that, that's what um, the bars. Uh, uh, um, screaming Emu. Sorry, I missed that, mate. It's uh, I, I'm completely wrong. It's not the pianos there. Pianos are right at the roll-on point of the runway, uh, and then you get your marker bars, which are positioned at um, different stages on different runways, depending on I think how wide they are or something like that. Um, but yeah, thank you, sir, for uh, confirming that. Or the keys right in the front of the runway. Quite rarely do they land on that. They're basically aiming, they're pitching it for the thousand foot mark, which they're right on target for now. And there it is, look at that. Nailed it. Probably be able to raise that. Oh, that's interesting. We'll have, to, we'll have to keep an eye on that then, won't we? About the uh, one air jumbo jets. That's a shame if they've, if they've already you know, um, wow, because
because uh, you know sometimes man sometimes and I, you know I'm in British Airlines I don't want to sort of like you know um, have anything bad to say about anyone but sometimes they seize aircraft don't they if they haven't been paid for or you know when the sheriffs come round rudder deflect yeah of course um, that's one of the hardest things I found uh, is when an aircraft when you're trying to steer an aircraft like a like a vehicle really uh, but you're using your feet to do it it's totally uh, totally different than obviously using a steering wheel uh, there is a tiller uh, that you can use but even that is like you know uh, it's one of those things that you really have to master the skill so when the plane lands and becomes a vehicle uh, you're using the rudder to steer it initially then down to around about 80 knots 60 80 knots if they want the tiller will kick in um, for manual steer uh, otherwise the um, uh, the pilots sometimes just continue to use their the rudder pedals to steer the aeroplane Hamad Khan is a, a returning member. Welcome back, Hamad. Great to see you, mate. Um, and that's uh, Jason Bostock has gifted 10 memberships. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, and fan, a uh, fact man. Just see the Etihad 380. We'll probably catch that climbing and turning left. But let's, uh, is another 350 or 330? 330. Neo, I think. Big engines, big droopy undercarriage. But uh, look at the winglet. Trent 7000s. This is Delta. But the very interesting thing. Yeah, you see, you see. They don't want basically. Will you kick? So that appears that the reverses apply will only apply to a certain degree before until the front wheels are on the ground. Well, it's No brakes on the front of these these jetliners. This is a CEO variant of what you've just seen. Current engine option is what it stands for. Kind of makes it uh, sound odd because they don't make these anymore unless it's a military uh, application or something like that. Look at those wings flexing, man. It's kind of struggling a little bit. Victoria and David are doing it today, but hello to you as well. <laughs> if you're just sitting around uh, with nothing to do, it's really fun to help you. Uh, we're on our Twitter account, aren't we, Jaleel? Oh, no, no, YouTube, she follows us or something. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, she's a subscriber. No, member! She's a member, isn't she? Uh, subscriber.
all the other uh, A-lists who, uh, who enjoy watching. <laughs> oh. oh my god, it's a bird that looks like a drone or a drone that looks like a bird. Please stop everything. Chilly, look. Give us a wave, mate. <laughs> What's that? Is that the, uh, that's the monkey in it that's uh, in the office? Do you want a sticker, mate? Remember the monkey? Was it? <laughs> oh, no. Bless him. Start up those Pratt & Whitney's mate, there's the number one. Now watch a little bit of smoke as the uh, combustor fires up. Literally, we're talking about his wine, he's turning the, the rear section, turning the front section, and then eventually everything starts, then they inject the fuel, bring the engines up to pressure. That's all good. That's a nice clean start. Andrew Stanley wonder if Emirates will bring their th new 350s to Heathrow when they get them. Well, I sincerely hope so. Um, they, they are operating a 777 in. Nice start, nice start. Sorry folks, gonna have to go to this, just in case. Hybrid 320. Definitely running them longer than normal. Hasn't started that number two yet. Take this 
time, hasn't he? He's got maybe a, uh, a temperature issue possibly with the number one engine and it, uh, maybe a feed issue with the, um, the hydraulic systems, the power start system to the uh, starter generators. I love pretending no, to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Big words. Engineering. I think this guy might actually taxi uh, on one engine. I think that may be the reason why they're not running that, because they're doing an F and F check, so it looks like everything's alright. Alright? Lychee Pink Planner is a uh, brand new member. Lychee Pink Planner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, James McKelmy, great question. Very, very regularly asked, what is the wind limit for landings? What is a wind, wind limit for auto land? Um, on, depends on what aircraft you're flying. Um, but they will, uh, I mean, obviously, up if it gets ridiculous, like, you know, like um, a, a tornado speed, like, you know, but we did have it, what what, what did we um, get in Storm Eunice? Was it 70 mile an hour, Jilly? 70 mile an hour wind, so, you know, they'll have a go. Depends on whether it's a headwind, a crosswind. Oh, listen to that. We're uh, very good um, friends with Flight Radar 24, um, and we like to promote Flight Radar 24. Hello. I understand what you're saying, but um, I kind of like to let the audience um, have a go at that in terms of what aircraft it is, um, where it's coming from, uh, sometimes the duration and all that. From time to time, I'll call them out, but uh, I like the interaction between you guys and Fly Radar and um, and and you know the chat, the whole chat thing, because it, you know you're. You're not just um, chatting with me, you're also chatting with the general uh, audience. So if you want to come in and say where it's coming from and how long it's been flying for and uh, so on and so forth, like we're getting at the moment, then you are more than welcome. Uh, and I will try to, re uh, to see your comment, but uh, don't forget, as people are aware, um, as I'm scanning the airfield permanently um, and looking at comments and uh, sort of like multitasking, trying to do as best I can, um, I may miss comments um, more often than I don't miss them, if you see what I mean. Okay, little ATR, is it a 42? This could be, uh, this could be quite tasty. San Sharma, one engine taxi. Uh, 280 number three in. 280, does it? 380 I think, so the 
typo there. <laughs> Stephen. Wake behind that uh, 380, obviously. A Kelvin Grant Etihad looks like 
she's had new cowls on. Really? Let's see, I didn't notice it. They, are, they do keep them clean, let's face it. Um, that is the standard colour. Read all about it! Um, it is the standard colour for um, for the Etihad um, livery, is it not? With the um, sort of creamy cowls. Bits and pieces sounds very windy. Yes, it is. That's because it is. <laughs> using the non-digital one, yeah? I'm using, you know, the one that we, yeah. Josh Grimwood is a returning member. Welcome back, Josh. Let's see how these guys deal with it. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Come on, son. That jays. It's got anything on board. First exit. Jimmy G, great landing on the 380. Rev2X. AGN 320 Neo from Athens in Greece. Thank you, Raptorx. Thank you to everybody who uh, gives out the info. Oh, could have a funky shot here. Stand by. So I'll keep it going, keep it going. Ready for a funky in. Looked 
a little bit low there. That lamppost there, the light itself is actually a good guide. So we've flown on this uh, inbound Singapore jet, Kilo November. I don't know which leg it was. Ooh. So you hit a pocket of air and all of a sudden the aircraft behaves in a got to be on your uh, you got to be on your A game here ready for any unforeseen sudden gusts yeah nailed it BA going on with air engines. Of course Rolls Royce. The Derby plant, I think they've got, um, how many cells have they got up there? Oh, listen to this lovely old trip. He had a big smile on his face there. See the Pito heads and the static ports angle of attack sensor um, those three in alignment there sort of like give it that smile of course the static ports are sort of down there who's this in? is it another lufty jet directive now come from the FAA with even more uh, US carriers uh, having to take their aircraft out of circulation and inspect the engines uh, because it's the powder that they that they make these um, it's crazy isn't it it's a bit like um, certain alloys that you get most of the undercarriage are made from um, from that particular type of alloy which is a formed alloy a cast alloy should I say not sure whether they cast them or what but uh, this, is, this is Gulf Air's Dreamliner I think got a bit of a, got a, bit of a southerly element in it now is it turning is the wind a turning Spotting Pro, Plane Spotting Pro, my friend. One of the biggest questions asked on Big Jet TV. Um, it's the Panasonic VX1, not the VXF1, uh, like the Formula One, but not the VXF1. It's the VX1. Um, it's a cheap camera. It has to be said in terms of the uh, cost of digital cameras these days. Um, it's uh, it's it's very cheap uh, around about 500 quid maybe even less depending on um, where you're buying it from but uh, they know about us the, the, the folks at Panasonic I've spoken to them and we don't want any sponsorship or anything like that because uh, it's just not worth it I don't want to sort of like uh, you know sell out to someone and have to keep you know um, I rather have relationships with people um, which is great because uh, 
I always like to promote a good product and uh, this camera although we've been through a few because uh, remember it has to go through very hot conditions very cold conditions wet conditions of course of that strong headwind isn't it the, the brakes just work so efficiently there's no it's not water there's no wet conditions brakes will work a hundred percent CPR turning finals over Rother Hive oh yeah the Rother Hive tunnel isn't it so we should see that. Is that Singapore? So still some way out before the gear comes down. Just doing their final checks now. Um, maybe getting their flaps to setting three or something like that. And then um, doing the final part of the procedure with the gear coming down now. Still on autopilot if they want it. Uh, can handle it in these winds. Sometimes the autopilot can be as late as where this guy is now. You hear it if you're on board one of these jets. Even if you're sitting up the back, you hear that little um, announcement, notification. spoken to who uh, some are saying uh, stick sti sticking with um, sticking with their the, the, the regional or you know uh, short haul stuff oh, you know really does depend on the individual doesn't it in terms of you know if they have a, a bit a busy family life and they kind of don't want to be away from home too much um, on international travel um, even though it is uh, it is only sort of like a day isn't it nowadays I think uh, most airlines unlike the old days where they'd be overseas for like four or five days. Um, they were the good old days, weren't they? David Fulton. London Heathrow, David. It says it bottom left hand side of the screen, sir. Shame we missed up. Everybody's sitting there weighing with their uh, popcorn, aren't they? <laughs> for the f for the go around. See the white leading edge component on those engines, there, folks. That's the engine they sell. It's a big component, and uh, one that is uh, regularly switched out, uh, this, which is why you see quite a lot of aircraft with odd panels on their engines. Uh, whether it's the core cowls, the middle section, uh, or whether it's the reverse door sections, back end. Um, a lot more involved with the uh, with the Trent 700 because it has those sort of like hinged door reversers which obviously I'm, Im 
imagining that they are all attached as one component potentially. Easy Sally, easy. Claire T, welcome Claire, brand new member. being towed from a remote stand to um, it's a Singapore jet San Sharma loving the wind noise there we go slight crosswind element now so you might see these jets sort of like dipping that left wing a little bit and you might see a little bit more of the, um, the shed effect come into um, effect so to speak as I call it from those big um, maintenance sheds there on the right hand side with British Airways Virgin Atlantic and, uh, and now yeah no said as well so the wind so if you can imagine, see the sock, the winds whipping up over those big buildings there. Uh, it can cause a little bit of turbulent, sort of like um, wake over those buildings and across the final approach at around about 100 feet or less. You there GP? Um, I've got you on the headset but uh, I'm not hearing you. Oh there we are. Before you got stuck in the toilet. CPR this slinger is number one. Look at the rudder, folks. Well, actually, she's she's slightly turned on to us. At the Might have been the shed effect that caused that. Straight down the runway, struck. Straight down the runway, son. Gosh, there it is, man. Been on that. where the 381s was once built um, are now used for building the A321 at Toulouse so they've now got two 
uh, main European FALs uh, for the A321. Aiden Campbell, EK3120, minutes away, there we go. Uh, Paul Glover, A380 is the best. Jane Quinney, Emirates 380, 21 minutes, thank you. San Sharma loves the 380. Hodgie, uh, yes, it is, it's, it is an amazing aeroplane. Lots of young kids embracing the 380 now as well, I know. Because let's face it, what we were as kids, loving the jumbo, these youngsters, they don't see the jumbo as often as we do, and so it's become more of a sort of like wow factor than the, the, the 380 super jumbo, hasn't it? That's an egg. Look at that wing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The unmistakable uh, um, big tall tail and little stubby undercarriage of the 737. any prettier it's massive isn't it MDC Vegas do you think 380 is here to stay well for the, for, for the next um, decade definitely at least I mean Emirates looking to continue flying their 380 fleet till 2040 folks 2040 um, and that's down to the uh, delay in delivery of the 779 so there we go That's a, I think that's a 350 in front of the Dreamliner. Look at the wing perspective, man. Look, look at the wing profile. I think that's a 350, or is it a triple? Is it a 350? Oh my goodness. I need to see the, the wing lines. A Meow XO is a new member. A Meow! <laughs> Someone's cat's just joined. Tune in, all you hear is... <laughs> Stephen Scrace has gifted a membership. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Put my theory to test, didn't it? Uh, to, yeah. To bed, sorry. About the uh, reverses being the full reverse not being applied until the front wheel's on the ground. Not the case. Not the case. Uh, <laughs> I was um, on full reverse right the way uh, about before his long before his uh, front gear came down. So yeah, it is a 350. Look, um, but yeah. Even so, it doesn't look as though the 350 has a big flex on the wing, but it does. It's just a dream line. Oh, God. I'll get me go. <laughs> Shouldn't know it by the look at the undercarriage, son, for God's sake.
as an aviator or an, somebody who appreciates engineering, aviation in general, look at the Spruce Goose. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. Spruce Goose. Um, that was a, you know, if you're going to call an aeroplane ugly, I, I wouldn't call it ugly, but, you know, people would, as aviation goes, because it's just ginormous. Um, it flew for about 15 seconds. <laughs> seaplane and um, it flew for about right mate it flew for about 15 seconds or about 300 meters or something like that um, but uh, you know that's what you could potentially com uh, compare with the 380 it's just an enormous aeroplane and a fantastic piece of engineering Carina undercarriage problem ladies and gentlemen we're just going to fly with the undercarriage extended for about two minutes while we do a demonstration flight <laughs> how cool is that man that's uh that's basically uh, one of one or more of the wheels that has not stopped turning as a result of a brake malfunction of some sort electrical braking systems on the dreamliner so one of those wheels is still turning, so normally they leave it for around about two minutes. Uh, very unlikely it's a hot brake scenario. I'm putting that down to the, uh, the climatic conditions at the moment and the, um, and the fact that they, uh, I mean, they have had a half decent enough taxi, but um, it's very unlikely to be hot brakes. It's more likely to be a wheel that's, uh, so they leave it down, extended for two minutes around about that time, maybe longer. Um, when I think there may be sensors uh, that, that, that inform them that the wheel is now rotating at a slow enough speed uh, for them to um, to retract the undercarriage. Of course, it's a very dirty configuration. A bit like a um, bit like having um, sandbags dragging behind your car. But anyway. Um, They'll uh, continue to fly and then, um, of course, if you can understand from an engineering perspective, wheels and tight wheels, a wheel itself will always work best when it is vertical and not horizontal because that put, puts load on the bearings and uh, other components of the uh, wheel and hub assembler. Karina's gifted five memberships and Helen Clapper's gifted a membership. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Beryl Cooper, Spruce Goose, was next to HMS Queen Mary, equally beautiful. Yeah, is that in, uh, is that Los Angeles where the Spruce Goose was uh, uh, parked up? Um, I wasn't actually aware that the Spruce Goose was uh, was, was still, um, was, it is still a, a an exhibit. So this looks like. Track now, mate. See, that's where the that's where the wind is whipping over those sheds where they hit it there, beneath the bows. <laughs> Brilliant! Beneath the bows is uh, upgraded to superclass. Thank you, sir. Or madam. Uh, beneath the bows, down there in the bottom of the ship, we're on a skirt. Spectrum Studio is gifted a mention. Cool. Oh, uh, Miles High Spruce Goose is in Oregon. Well, I tell you what, is it? Are you able to? I'll have to do a little bit of research on that later because, uh, you know, I've been on the Sunderland flying boat at um, at um, Hendon Museum. But um, I have uh, never been in love. No, <laughs> um, I'd love to. I'd love to have a look at that. Can you go on board it? I'm guessing you probably can. Uh, Violet, giving a big shout out and a warm welcome. 
out beneath the bells. There we go. Lots of runway, lots of runway. Nothing to panic about. No panic! Oh, Long Beach. It, it left Long Beach many years ago, Simon saying. Uh, what did they do? Tow it up there? Eddie Crow. Or Crow. What do you think about these airships coming back into use? Well, they're new, um, new uh, type of airship, aren't they? God, oh, flipping egg, mate. That was close. Uh, they're a new type of airship, aren't they? Like ginormous, great big things, which um, you know, it's all about logistics of where you're going to park them, etc., etc. Um, might be a. It's a bit like the air taxis, isn't it? These new e-air taxis that are very um, soon going to be uh, coming into operation. It just means, again, it's another logistical thing about airspace. Um, because, you know, <laughs> there's no village or town in the UK that has a department dealing with their airspace, is there really? Come on! Don't be shy! There we go! Lovely, lovely! <laughs> Short? Am I seeing Short, isn't he? Stephen H has gifted a membership. Thank you, Stephen. Short Maver, there we go. Welcome. Basically, a commercial aviation started with the uh, the amazing flying boats, Boeing, um, of course, being a uh, a big manufacturer of flying boats, the Clipper, commissioned uh, off during the Second World War uh, as troop carriers, maybe I don't know, but um, but certainly the uh, early days of aviation. Um, if you wanted to get down to the likes of Australia, um, you had to do the, um, that's why they call it the kangaroo room. Um, and in fact, you know, Project Sunrise is nothing new. Folks. Project Sunrise has been around for many years with, uh, with um, uh, Qantas. And they call it the kangaroo room because of the amount of hops that you have to make. Uh, when flying in down to be like, you know, oh, it'd be like, well, quite a lot of stops, put it that way, before you reach um, the coastline. They didn't have seating for very many either, so it was uh, also used for the Royal Mail route as well, you know, um, but the Sunderland of the Flying Boat was also one of those types, BOAC used them, Pan American. That's quite a good example of the 320 wing drooping there actually. Put it 
that way because it costs a hell of a lot of money just to paint one aircraft and not only that but you have to consider the cost of repainting an aircraft but also the time that it spends on the ground because the more time the aircraft's on the ground the less money it's making for the airline so um, find the uh, frequency of doing a, a retro livery is more often on a few aircraft than it is uh, on a whole fleet Lufthansa have, uh, Lufthansa have um, done a great job, but it's been a number of years now since Lufthansa um, refreshed their fleet, which I'm not a massive fan of, got to be honest with you. I mean, in terms of, you know, a new paint job, it's okay. Um, I'm not, I'm, it was always a great shame to see that the crane uh, was white and not yellow, uh, because that yellow crane had been with Lufthansa for many, many years. I smell a jet A1. UK Kiwi Bird. Give to five benches. Thank you, UK Kiwi Bird. EK 31, five minutes out. Thank you, Lufthansa 747 fan. Which mama? Got a 
hold that flare man wow yeah CPR EK31 number four worldwide track by 736 people. And that is EK31 just about to break through. Women, Bangladesh 787 from Siliet in nine minutes. second to come down it'll fold down behind it uh, you wait if you're sitting on that plane and you know that how the undercarriage uh, extension works you'll hear that of the um, all the suction almost of the um, the gear as it extends um, and then the doors bang bang they'll close and then the back section will come down as well so it's just but for aerodynamic reasons that they extend them independently. Eddie Lane, Airbus. What's that? Air France 220. Sorry, GP. What's that? Went for the flare, she's going around, she's going around, go on, no, no, hey, 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 
<laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Aiden. It's gifted a membership. It's very kind of you, mate. Okay, big one in. Uh, Chris Clark would love to see an air show produced by Big Jet TV. Oh yes. If I produced a, 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 an air show, folks, it would be a really good air show. First of all, no PA system. And if there was, they'd only be allowed to speak while the aircraft's on the ground. Get all the talking done and let the plane do the work. No silly music. None of that, like, you know, highway to the danger zone. It's almost as bad as dad dancing some, some of these air shows, you know, it's, it's, it's cringeworthy, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, put me in charge of an air show and um, my goodness me, we'll have a good time. I heard that, uh, wasn't it? Wasn't it old uh, Guy Ritchie's actually? He's got an airfield, isn't he? And he's doing an air show. Yeah, but if he's, if the trouble is that if he's, oh yeah, it was John, yeah, then John the landlord. Sounds like, sounds like a rather, rather dodgy case, isn't it? John the landlord. But he's not, he's a proper jet. Uh, now, yeah, uh, but the trouble is if, if Guy Rich is putting in a hand to someone who and then it just ends up being just like every other, any other air show, doesn't it? And here we have the wonderful Spitfire. Listen to my voice, listen to my voice. You're not near the aeroplane. Penelope, would you have a rant set? No, because everything would be absolutely perfect at Jeremy's air show.
what's she saying? Uh, Airbot saying in the US PA systems are required for emergency. Oh yeah, of course. Emergency and crowd control. Yeah, I completely agree with that. But once all the crowd is in position and everybody's happy, uh, the uh, the PA system will only be used uh, in circumstances uh, like that arising. You know, like there's an emergency or people need to clear here or clear there. But you don't need some geezer waffling on whilst the plane's doing its display. Um, that's the bit that sort of like, you know, um, whilst it's on the ground, taxiing out for the display, absolutely perfect. Do everything you need to do there. Give, give as much information as you like about the aircraft. But once it starts making a noise, like we do here most of the time, I shut my mouth. what it's all about right now isn't it um, you know getting from A to B is one thing but getting the thing on the ground in windy conditions definitely is another uh, CPR saying that the Emirates 380 that just landed is now at number one Star Alliance livery 320 from Zagreb. General Hospital, Pat Murphy, Aidan Campbell, Brian Stewart. Yeah, there we go, Brian Stewart. While I love the old big band music, yeah, of course, so do I. I mean, I'm a big fan of it. You know, you walk into an old museum and they're playing it softly in the background. <laughs> and all that but you just don't need it or anything else when a plane you go in there to watch and hear the planes not just see them you want to hear them of crowds of people um, with, uh, with music being played over it I just or, or some announcer talking over it it's like come on man even the, even the jet fighters even though the, you know it's just think about the people who are videoing it as well they just want a video of a plane doing a display they don't want to video a plane with the commentary going on in the background it kind of ruins the, uh, the whole feel of it you ask any editor. This is your bim and jet. Thick 
the uh, the carbon is on those engine cowls. Um, I've been lucky enough to be airside quite a number of times and literally I say I felt those cows knocked on them you know uh, on the um, Gen X engine especially when we used to do the uh, airside pieces with uh, Cargo Logic Airlines um, very um, concerned about this news of One Air 747s uh, and the fact that they have been um, flown to the US for storage or to a storage um, facility. They not only store aircraft there, but they also break them up, don't they? Craig Russell. This is Virgin 787 from Got something right. <laughs> Lloyd Bell maintenance, Jerry. What are we talking about? What, what, what? Sam. Oh, maintenance. They have gone for maintenance. Sam, thank you. Uh, Lloyd Bell also confirmed. I did say maybe they've gone for maintenance. Seems a funny old thing to. Um, to, to, to I, I didn't. I wasn't aware that they uh, offered maintenance facilities there. But both of them. It's quite interesting. Is that? Is that? Um, uh, uh, is that engine and maintenance that's a requirement? Is that is it just a sea check or is it you know something more extensive or, or what? I don't understand. I mean, uh, I can understand if one of the aircraft had gone for maintenance, but for both of them too, it's uh, anyway. There we go. Well, that's good news at least that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. Manic Miner. Seems there's more wind on the... Why? Well, Manic Miner, I've got to be honest with you. Why do you think that is? I don't want to sound like a, an idiot, but is it possibly because it's windy? Um, I think it says it on the titles as well, doesn't it? Rohit Parkell just saw this one take off from Mumbai earlier today. Wow. Simon Percy. My flights were in the 90s with Philippine Airlines. Bluebird. Yeah, we heard about uh, Bluebird, didn't we? I can get cruises, Julie. Cruises, if you fancy it. Uh, cruises, anyone? I've got a blue s patch on over the top of me, and there's one right now. Suddenly shining in the sky. See how the bells run sadly. It stopped raining and the burn is undefeated. It's so beautiful today. Hey, do, 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 do. It's so quite nosy there. To, like, that attitude. There it comes now. A little bit faster, a bit more speed on the throttles there. Give a bit of a speed up. And now comes the flare. Driving in it. Oh, that was nicely. That's a very smooth landing. Wow. Give us a shot of the what, GP? Wing flex. Give us a shot of the wing flex. Mr. Blue Sky. Um. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it a go, Mick. Um, 
Well, the thing is that you won't get much wing flex on the uh, on the on the on the tiddlers, as we call them. Yeah, Bluebird's gone to Madrid, hasn't it, for maintenance, not storage. So that's just scheduled maintenance, I'd imagine. Uh, Mac Cat Lady B E A plane still in Spain. Aviation Singapore. Hello, Gillian Sankey. John McKay. Nothing yet, mate. Now, this is the old Lufthansa livery. Now, you make your mind up which you prefer. Personally, it's this one for me. The original yellow crane. Some heritage to it, hasn't it? plays out. on the basis that they are uh, kind of beyond their sell-by date they want to get rid of them uh, so they're not going to spend money on them those neo jets that you see uh, are, are sort of like during the crossover period that were already uh, destined to be painted in the old livery so I think Lufthansa for the time being are keeping those uh, old liveried neo jets in their old livery until the next phase I'd imagine because uh, it's quite nice to see I think there's your wing flex folks if you want to see it over 13 feet of wing flex on the Dreamliner most aircraft as well now watch those wings literally release now and turn flat almost I know the only 
similarity may be the uh, the yellow used in the Ryanair emblem I don't know but uh, Beverly George has gifted a membership thank you Beverly and Nick Gray has also gifted a membership yeah it's very unique that old livery with Lufthansa I like it Proper wing that is. Looking for Mises. Although they um, they are pre they, they they just um, they're scavengers, aren't they? The most a lot of birds of prey, especially the kite. And the, um, Season one three Finn Air three fifty seven minutes out. Gadget. We're talking about maintenance and storage. And what that's uh, in relation to, whether it's the jumbos or whether it's uh, the uh, the eco jet. Craig Russell Virgin Atlantic seven eight seven nine from Delhi. Uh, that's. I think inbound. H Raptor X. going to see BEA back in operation are we I think they're just storing it for whatever reasons it might well you know it's still airworthy I'm guessing they're probably just trying to sell it or uh, I, I don't know they're gonna decommission it it is an old aeroplane it's a 319 isn't it BEA Rob LHR yes favorite lifty is the retro livery on their 747 no better really um, I really liked their uh, retro um, livery with on their 321 a few years back. Now been um, sold off. I think it's been sold to another airline. 1960s slash 70s retro. rudder moving on that uh, on that 767 that's the pilot's input on the rudder pedals to steer the aircraft um, there's a certain degree of a certain element that uh Piv 
Miller, good afternoon. Watching from South West England. Mick Werewell, uh, Wee Wow, Werewell, uh, tuning in from Thailand. Good day to you, Mick. first here from Steve the Dodge. Thank you mate, appreciate it, or oh, whatever. Um, but thank you sir, appreciate it. First I saw it anyway. Oh okay, someone told us what we're getting into it. Chuck a stew! I liked the BOAC 747 retro livery, was quite sad seeing it. Engine listens and Athens, yeah. early didn't they um, the jumbos oh what a great shape still we've still got footage from time that's gone by with this runway lined with jumbo jets folks Rate the uh, the bigger engines way back closer to the 900s, um, the Trent uh, the Trent 900 power plant, but um, it's got the tri undercarriage system on the 1000, six wheels either side as opposed to four wheels um, on the um, on the 900. This is the 1000 with British Airways. It's like a it's like a triple seven undercarriage really. Oh, it's thin air, isn't it? Sorry, this is a nine hundred then. So this is a this is a nine hundred with four wheels. Okay, what's that? Yeah, JS626. That, yeah, that was a that was something that was very short lived. You know, the talk about having uh, passengers standing. Um, <laughs> it lived just about as long as uh, the idea of having pilotless aircraft, didn't it?
currently down to um, aerodynamics. You know the DC10. The um, did he just have a? It did, 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 did he just fart? The, um, the, the 330. Did his APU just? Um, excuse me. Um, yeah. maintain the same engines um, but uh, but of course yes it is mainly uh, the engines technology and um, and 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 the the, the 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 weight of the aircraft as well because of the lightweight components uh, that are being used on them uh, but yes it's a, it's a it's a chalk and cheese when you compare the two eras He's a returning member. Welcome back, Passenger 77. Brilliant. Great name. Craig Russell not seen a DC-10 since 2003. Cool, blimey, I'll tell you what. Okay. I'm right, thanks, mate. Cheers, fella, thank you. Um, the... Uh, a smell of the um, the smell of the curry coming out of the house. They got curry on the menu tonight, haven't they? At um, at the Renaissance. Every time I meal, there's a different smell looming up and over from round the corner. Uh, John Montague, Vietnam livery, so far the best on show today. Yeah, it's a good looking livery, isn't it? The old uh, the teal. Somebody putting a couple of quarts of oil in the engine there. Look, see, see that maintenance worker there on the at the engine. There's a little flap which opens up very easy for them to uh, to um, to fill, literally top the oil up. And of course, that will be noted on the system uh, on the engine's performance, and when it goes to being. Um, jumped out at me was um, the fact that the the um, uh, cargo compartment of the uh, of the 737 the, the, the you know the, the bowels of the aircraft you know the the, the lower uh, storage area um, cargo compartment whatever you want to call it um, isn't uh, capable of taking um, containers, you know, uh, like, but the A320 is able to do that. Um, obviously, you can see that from how high up 
the 320 is in terms of its uh, fuselage depth. You know, look how deep it is below the uh, below the window line. Uh, when you compare that, of course, to the uh, to the 737. Oh, is it? Is it CM Max? Oh, is it? Oh, cool. Might see it. Might tax up this, uh, taxi up this way. So, uh, progress update, folks. New venture. Well, new ventures. Um, we're hoping to bring you some news. Hearing that, that's got a pretty funky uh, registration. Charlie November Dash Max, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a private plate, isn't it? <laughs> on the 737 cargo area is well within reach of a normal person making it easy to turn around well yeah but you still want to crawl inside it haven't you you still i mean you look at the look at the loading and offloading um uh, 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 the differences between the two of uh, with a with an airbus versus uh the the boeing uh, the 737 versus the 320 for example um Still got to have somebody inside the belly of the aircraft uh, actually um, securing the the, 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 the the luggage the packages etc etc um, I know there are there is that loading system that we saw at Schiphol which is pretty cool um, Which was like a, a, a conveyor system, which is pretty uh, was pretty impressive. Never seen it in operation before. It's it's like a almost like a slinky, um, very efficient, but it still means that you've got to take it down and inside the aircraft with you. Have somebody um, who doesn't have a bad back uh, inside the um, uh, the aircraft uh, receiving uh, the packages and suitcases, etc. Much like. Um, you know that, that that's all handled by the the, the 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 personnel on the ground as well. So, you know, it just seems to me that it's uh, it's just more of an operation, uh, whereas um, a K lift with one operator coming up there and and um, and, uh, and and loading the cans as they're called. Um, I, as far as I'm aware, they don't have to have anybody on board the aircraft inside the, the hold of, a, of an A320. Um, I don't think so, anyway. Um, it is, they're able to do it with one operator who, because there are uh, systems on board the aircraft which can also um, manoeuvre the um, and lock the containers as well, because they have to be locked in place, you see. Two hundred from Bay 
Beijing 24 minutes and that's an ER um, I think that ER is the one that the, uh, looks like it's got a door open doesn't it there look lift your door open mate he obviously has a stand um, thing of your chick in it Ted T working and lurking Clive Clark Brian Stewart Go away, Jerry's thought. <laughs> Peter Muller, good afternoon to you. When it eventually happens, you'll be uh, you'll be pretty happy with, I think. Well, I know I can bank on it. excited I have to say to actually announce it when it does happen well when I announce it you'll see trust you uh, flying out to Madrid with Iberia in September scheduled on the A330 back on the 350 wow how cool is that awesome oh go on 
hot sun. There we go. Been a few of those. A test Saturday morning, Mr. 747-8 them. Ground school scheduled to finish Friday. First simulator session. Wow! Is that pilot related then, Simon? Awesome. Lucky you, mate. Lady Hole Korean triple seven three out. It's a decent jet. Jay Allberg, is it? Yay! 
generation. Yes, then, kind of the novel we wore off. However, I have to say thank you again uh, to um, uh, the lovely couple the other day who turned up with their young son, um, left a bag of goodies, uh, and one of those things was um, raspberry, I have to say, um, mini rolls. Uh, thank you. Uh, a bash in San Fran as well, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a, a big thank you, they didn't last long. So. And Charchi says meow for the... for the, uh, for the dreamies as well. See, that's what I was talking about earlier on, folks, with the different coloured engine cows. You see the, the back end of that engine's got grey cowlings on it. Uh, they're basically from the... Sp from the stores, uh, from the United stores, uh, they'll have um, uh, 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 spare parts, literally. Um, the other parts may have gone off for servicing. It's all, almost likely it would have done because uh, all the engine, ev all the removable and moving components on those engines, you know, um, and the cowlings and you know all that kind of stuff. It's all serviceable. You know, it does need to be serviced uh, at certain intervals. And it just so happens that sometimes they don't have spare cowls that are the right colour, literally. Don't forget, ladies and gents, another couple of months and we've got the 747-8 with Korean Airlines coming into London Heathrow, uh, taking the place, I would imagine, of that 777-300. Um, so, uh, we will at least have, I, I guess, a daily service. Neil Harrison, did Continental get bought by United? Good question, that. Because yes is the answer to that, or they merged, or something like that, uh, United. Uh, but very much so, when I started Big Jet TV, um, it took me a long time to get used to the United branding, uh, or at least the United name, and I kept calling it Continental, because I flew on the Continental DC-10 from London Gatwick many, many years ago. Um, and of course, coming back into aviation, uh, the first thing I noticed was the fact that it was called United. So there we go, Neil, yes. No. Yeah, it was. probably uh, retained their jobs all the um, you know some of the executives maybe I don't know you know, I'm not sure what the uh, what the end result was in terms of job losses or job positions gained uh, Martin Saxton yes making a point there of the uh, Emirates 350 uh, off the production line, uh, well, production line, the foul, the final assembly line. So that aircraft is. Uh, has she got engines yet? Has the has the uh, Emirates 350 got uh, engines yet? John O'Godley, did you hear about the person who got stuck in the airplane loo for the flight? 
flight and had to stay in there during the landing. Blimey, I, I mean, uh, if you get stuck in the loo, the loo door opens, it opens it like in a, in a concertina, doesn't it? Most of them anyway. Uh, there are some that are slightly larger and have, have single doors, but you'd bust it open, wouldn't you? You know, if I was the... Uh, I wouldn't want to risk having a, a passenger in the toilet during landing. I would have said that's... Uh, I'd, uh, I'd put the aircraft into a holding pack. Squawk. Squawk. Um, and um, and then uh, tell air traffic control that we have a, a, a slight issue with a passenger um, stuck in the toilet. Then let them all have a good laugh about it. And then say, right, well, what are you going to do about it? Well, if I was the pilot, I'd be like, well, hold on a minute. Let's get to one of us or whoever, uh, someone burly. Because let's face it, they're not exactly like oak doors, are they? The doors on toilets on on, a, on an aircraft toilet, you could boot that thing and it would it would it would open, wouldn't it? So I I don't know, really. Someone got stuck in the loo and they carried on. F I don't know, Jono. Um, I don't know if that's uh, it might well be a true. Uh, you know, it might well be uh, something that actually happened. But flipping heck. rather have a busted door than a dead passenger, you know, or a severely injured passenger, or, you know. I mean, you can't, like, knock on the door. Make sure you hold on tight, son. We're coming in to land. <laughs> I can't hear you. Ethiopian got newer wingtips. No, sir. There are new, no new wingtips on the 350s that I'm aware of. Um, I think it's still the same, uh, same design. Maggie, I saw a jammed loo door once. Lots of force applied to release it. Yeah, but there's one thing releasing it. The other thing is busting through it, isn't it? If you boot one of those doors right on the middle section where it where it hinges it's opening whether it breaks in the middle or whether it comes off its hinges or whatever it does um, mind you you've probably got just as much uh, chance of injuring the bleeding passenger inside the toilet um, booting in the door haven't you in hindsight Keefy Weefy good afternoon to you Take care, Keefy Weefy. In and out. What's that, Keefy? Home of L. That would be called turgulence. <laughs> Fair play. You see? There we go. Always seems to, seems to be that sort of like little moment of uh, ground effect. Yellow tail. Tony O'Reilly. Good afternoon. Screaming Emu, we can just unlock the door from the outside on lavatories. No booting required. Yes, that's that's a good point actually. I think that might have been an April Fool's to be honest with you. Because uh, he's he's absolutely right. I've seen the uh, I've seen the cabin crew uh, lock the uh, the toilet doors um, before landing or putting them out of service, so to speak. Um, yes. So yeah, yeah I, I think it is almost impossible because it is a manual latch as well, isn't it? I think there is a. I think it is. You can override it, of course, like Screaming Emu saying there, and he knows, folks, because he's a he's a genuine uh, pilot, one of our genuine pilots here on Big Jet TV.
Aviation Addict A350s definitely have two distinct wingtip designs. The newest one started going into production. Models in 2018. Really? Uh, okay. Well, that's the first I've heard of it. I was not aware that the A350 had two different wingtip designs. That's the first I've ever heard of it. Um, and you know what? If I'm if 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 that's something that I've missed, then so be it. But uh, in all the time that I've read news and updates and engineering and technical stuff from Airbus and all that kind of stuff, I've never uh, mind you. He's saying the ones. Um, the newest one started going in production in models in 2018 or 19. So ones that were pre... So in other words, the first models is what he's saying. Um, what was the difference in the design? Lady Panda and planes has seen uh, doors unlocked from the outside as they have jammed. There we go. Aviation addict was first design was more curved. Second as it is what I would say is angled and swept. Well, fair play. I'll have to look into that. I'd like to see a visual reference of it, if you see what I mean. Oh, blimey, look at this bloke. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, Lord. Oh, wash your hands, son. Oh, that was a uh, little hair and scaring, wasn't it? You see the uh, engine nacelle there. just landing at Dublin after diverting that's a Martin Air freight operation isn't it so it's got the KLM blue but it is a Martin Air which is the uh, uh, freight cargo operation of, uh, of of the Dutch operator I, I, I need to see uh, pictorial evidence of this winglet. Um, this is the E2 jet. Looks like a pregnant, pregnant fish, doesn't it? But wow, this thing is got now got Etops 2 on it. Uh, Embraer can now um, offer the aircraft for um, even more routes because uh, she can fly for 120 minutes uh, on a diver. Yeah, we love you too, Lufthansa. Oh, yucky, yucky, yucky. see it now um, I'd need to look at a 
I'd need to look literally at a, a pre-2018 um, 350 versus a post-2018 350 uh, to see that, um, that difference. Um, efficient engine, the Pratt and Whitney engine, much the same as what this aircraft is that you're looking at. Um, poor old Pratt and Whitney, um, and let's face it, uh, it's probably the, the probably not Pratt and Whitney themselves, although it might be, uh, who actually manufacture the um, the HPT blades, the high pressure turbine blades, uh, which are manufactured from a powder technique. Jane Quinney, uh, Qatar 350 coming in. Wait, is, okay, okay. I need to see this uh, old tip versus new tip. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Pre 2018, apparently. I mean, there's not many pre 2018. Three fiddies out there, is there? I mean, uh, the BA ones. When's, when's, what's the oldest BA? Um, <coughs> that's a lovely 787 dash 10, isn't it? Great wing tip on the, uh, on the 787, of course. Blended wing tip. It's crazy these wing tips when, they, when the aircraft pans past you. Uh, you do get to see the wingtip, the different geometries of it, literally it changes shape as it goes past you. Um, okay, okay. Blimey, the A3, the A330 Neo. Okay, we're googling A350 modified winglet now, folks. Uh, hopefully, there'll be some uh, specific information there that I can read up on. Uh, Scooter Springsteen flew back from Dusseldorf a week past Friday. It was delayed because of one of the toilets would not flush. Uh, standing at the gate, the plane was removed from the gate until a new plane could. Wow. Really? From Dusseldorf? What, a short haul flight like that? I mean, they got more than one toilet, haven't they, on a, on a 320, don't they? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it was a 320 or... Canadian in the UK, commercial airline engines are monitored by satellite. Yes, they are. Um, well, they're actually monitored by satellite by their own um, by their own uh, companies as well. So if a, if a long haul flight falls into, well, even if there's a slight uh, drop in whatever it might be, a sensor might pick it up on the way um, over. Uh, that'll be notified to the maintenance teams before they even arrive. Okay, so we're hearing about this uh, 350 winglet. Wow. What's the most what's the most characterized difference of it? Is it the squared off wing tip? It's the curvature. Well, well you're not going to see that from here, but uh, is it more pointy?
Okay, there we go. So yes, thank you. Very interesting. So the majority of the 350s, even the older ones that had the older winglet, were they retrofitted with the new winglet? Um, or offered to be retrofitted with the new winglet? Or did they just stick with them? That's really interesting. Who originally brought that to my attention? Thank you, whoever did, thank you. Uh, E&J, apparently new wingtip design features taller and squarer curvature compared to the original design. Taller and squarer. Well, that's not something you're really going to pick up from here, is it? Um, unless the two aircraft are literally parked together. Yeah, I, I, I need to, you kind of need to see, don't you? Um, is that a, it's a 330, isn't it? Is that a 330? At, uh, no, that's a, yeah, it's a 330 gate over there. Um, yeah, now I'm going to be looking all over. I need to see if, if there's a sort of like a, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a right at the tip of the, of the of the winglet itself, whether there's a, whether it's more, a bit like the Max winglet. If you look at the Max winglet versus the, the pre-Max winglet, which has those little flicks on them, they're very easy to tell apart. Um, but these 350 ones, I need to see them. Um, but uh, yeah. Great information, thank you so much. Uh, Captain Kirk Island 2018 Airbus upgraded 350 900 winglet. It is now the same as the one used on the Dash 900 ULR. There is no ULR though, is there? There is no ULR. That's, a, that's, a, that's what Airbus have sort of like, you know, taken out of the... Um, Yeah, there, there, there is. To be honest with you, Captain Kurt. The the um, I, I read an article a while ago um, that was you know an interview with Airbus about the ultra long range, and apparently that was more or less going to be used for, uh, for for the for the very long haul route, the the Aussie route, you know, um, for Operation Sunrise. Um, however, uh, they have now said that they don't need to call it a ULR because they don't need to fit extra tanks to it. Um, it's still it's capable of doing uh, the range. It's capable of doing the range um, without the need for extra fuel tanks. So um, I think they're I think they're they're going away from that ULR um, thing. Hello, mate. Max Winglitz, you 
you know that's a max if you just look at the winglet alone I mean there are other identifying features but if you see the um, you see the max there has got squared off um, uh, winglet whereas the uh, the the, the pre-max winglet that the uh, the likes of um, Qantas have been retrofitting to a few of their 737 800s I think um, have a, a, a flick on them uh, a slight subtle difference in design um, but I don't think there's something that we're going to notice uh, obviously the, um, the folks who are, who are knowledgeable about it on here will be able to you know um, I mean the next 350 that comes in we need a, we need an old one don't we I need to study it basically uh, Nico Logan Air ATR second to land okay we've got another Logan Air um, ATR 42 I think thanks Nico Craig Russell uh, I don't know if you've heard what Japan Air just released there's 351,000 yeah um, got a brand new uh, 351,000 delivered the other day didn't they Japan Airlines uh, not so much to replace the one that was uh, destroyed in the fire um, in the uh, runway incident but um, certainly at least they've uh, they're still one behind didn't they until they until they literally physically replace that one whether it's that would be through uh, Lloyds of London or something like that wouldn't it um, it's a big old insurance claim isn't it it's an ATR 500 over Hounslow I think it's CPR it's all picking up a little bit now getting a bit tasty there never will be Matt, a, a new super jumbo a little bit sketchy on approach always a sort of like a very nose down attitude on the ATR on approach A spot flight live, thank you. Was it only 900s and not the 1000s? Is that one thing we can clarify? Or is it, was it 351,000 and 900s? Easy sound. Is it just the 900s where they changed the window? Nice! Okay, so it was 1,900, okay, fair enough. They're a very, they're a very safe form of transport, Penny. Um, and short haul really you know um, to a degree anyway for short haul this is the A220 with Swiss
Yeah! When there's such a subtle change, yes. Um, other winglet designs are very easy to um, to identify. The unmarked. Charlie, I think it's. Uh, I don't think there's a, a jet bridge. I think you'll find that that uh, ATR will likely uh, sit on a remote stand. I think it is. I don't, just don't think it has the. Uh, yeah, it is like you say, too low to the ground. How low can you go? I think the ATR will end up parking up on one of these stands over here. In fact, there they are, awaiting the arrival of the aeroplane. In fact, she's sitting there waiting right now. In fact, that geezer's walking out to him. Uh, they've parked it. They've parked it. I think that's it. There and then. Yeah, they've parked it. Easy, Sam. Less money as well if you're on a remote stand. Not very um, nice for passengers, especially if they're um, deplaning in the rain. Oh, screaming emu, uh, AR, uh, ATRs did use um, jet bridges back in the day at Chicago. Really? Blimey. Oh, I know the one. They're the specially developed ones, aren't they? I've seen, um, I've seen some of those at some of the American airfields where they've got little sort of like uh, independent mini terminals with, uh, with yeah, yeah, I've seen them before. Um, we're not talking about these big giant ones here, I don't think. I think I think what he's talking about, little sort of like uh, independent little um, satellite terminals that are for those regional aircraft, um, like the uh, CRJs and the ATRs, perhaps, that kind of thing. Okay, this is uh, Swiss's 320 this time. Wait, 
this. Oh, easy, son. Yeah. IT Direct confirming the remote stands are indeed cheaper. Don't have to use the uh, so many resources, although there are still ground personnel who uh, who have to operate around the aircraft, you know, refuelers and uh, the folks who uh, load and unload the baggage, uh, aircraft cleaners, etc. etc. You know what, I probably imagine that they wouldn't put anything like that in there because you don't really need to know, do you? Oh, by the way, you're flying an aircraft that's got um, uh, um, uh, revised winglets on it. Uh, that's something that the pilots don't really want to know. I wouldn't imagine that it would be in the manuals or, uh, or, or anything like that, other than sort of like, you know, uh, it's just general knowledge of the, of the um, aviation uh, avgeek community, isn't it? I would have said, bless you. I would imagine that um, that the uh, the performance of the aircraft is not going to, you know, in terms of how it performs and, and flies, it's not going to be any different than, um, you know, between one between the other. Mark C nineteen seventy four. Okay, <laughs> for Mark Sprague, I say, makes him sound posh, you there. Uh, Mark C-74, 1974 years now, fair play. 321 Neo, in Swiss. Yeah, the, uh, the only time that you'll uh, like screaming at me saying there, the only time that it'll come into effect is when you're uh, type rating on a specific aircraft if it's obviously a, a bigger aircraft if you're going from a 321 uh, neo to a, an a330 for example um, taxiing is uh, one of the things that you need to be aware of uh, the fact that you've got a bigger wingspan um, don't really have to worry about going into the gate because the gate is there for you you've already been told you can go in there um, there's only so much you can do and see in terms of clearing wing tips. You have to be, uh, it's people around you that have to be aware of uh, aircraft movements. Nico, Qatar, 350, 1000, and China, uh, 350, 900 arriving soon. This is another 321 Neo. Bosch, fair play. Fence-style winglet compared to the uh, to the sharklet that we see here. Uh, David H. Our BA short of planes. The 1715 to Berlin is a plane registered in Denmark and has no fuselage marking. Uh, yes, that's 
probably as a result either of an aircraft that's gone into maintenance uh, and it's on uh, quite a high tent in uh, um, quite a dense route so therefore they need um, they need an aircraft to fill the gap fill, fill the void or uh, they're just short of an aircraft in terms of um, you know delays from the airframer you know Airbus whoever oh nice it's that beautiful retro Saudi jet that I actually uh, also um, uh, think about products coming from uh, places especially when you're able to see and track the, um, the, the, the track your package um, where it may be uh, bought quite a few things for the airport at Staines International um, that came from China and we tracked them via uh, Oh, all sorts of places, wasn't it, Julia? So. Radio X tomorrow morning, folks. About 8:30 in the morning. I came into Bournemouth, didn't it? Yeah, it flew on the um, it flew on the uh, A346 uh, into Bournemouth, part of the airport um, for Staines International. Uh, Steve Bluck, no, that Saudi livery that you just saw is the new Saudi livery, even though they did have. A retro jet uh, painted in that livery and it represents the old livery uh, however it is the new livery believe it or not I know it's a bit difficult to get your head round possibly but uh about it no no that is that is the new livery all their future aircraft are being painted in that new in the in the new old retro livery of Saudi Arabian Airlines brilliant so it's a big turn up for those guys because uh, it's a very colorful livery and, um, and, and and a great idea by the um, by the, the the design teams to uh, to utilize that old livery I love it Lab when I joined Saudi and they were transitioning from that retro livery to the blue tail. Good to see it back. Yeah, I remember blue tail. Yes, yes, yes. This looks like Air China. Yeah, let's read it out. Oh, hold on a minute. A buckaroo going on there, wasn't there? Yes, if you go onto your DAB digital radio, if you have DAB, you'll be able to listen to Radio X here in the UK 
Fall alert, fall alert, fall alert. Escape, escape, a, eh? escape, a. Eh? It's crazy in the uh, a certain amount. I don't know how much there was, but it must have been a, a great, a, a decent amount of bubble wrap getting into a, an engine on a 737 in America a, a few weeks back. Uh, created uh, engine surge. It was perfectly safe, but they obviously had to uh, circle and take the aircraft back. Um, and uh, put a replacement aircraft on because, you know, uh, if you get, you know, foreign debris going through your engine, anything bigger than a, you know, a micron, literally, um, you're going to, uh, you're going to need to uh, uh, seriously inspect that engine, most definitely using a boroscope to start with. Um, and uh, if anything's found that's, uh, you know, congealed around the uh, the turbine blades, it, you know what it's like if you run over a, if you run over a plastic bag with your lawnmower. Think about it that way. That's it. Stops it dead, doesn't it? You're going nowhere, son. You ain't cutting no grass today. Yippee! What are you doing across? Oh, I got hit in a plastic bag. Oh, all right. <laughs> Can I just remove it? No, 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 no. It's not as easy as that, love. No, no, no. You got to. Uh, we got. We got to take the. I got to take the whole engine out. I have to do it next week. I've got a bit more time. Anyway, where's the tea? <laughs> you cup of tea on the go. We're doing, a, um, we're doing a video call, aren't we? Well, they're probably not from England then, aren't they? Well, I don't know, maybe they're not. There's a lot of people who haven't heard of Radio X, and there's a lot of people who haven't heard of Chris Moores. He's not like, you know, um, but uh, there are millions who have. So, uh, but anyway, regardless, there goes that beautiful retro jet. Yes, there are people who've never heard of Monty Python, believe it or not. That geezer in Australia. I gave up in the end. <laughs> Tried everything I could. John Cleese, no. Life of Brian, no. Well, he's going to have to ask me for a, re a request, isn't he? What, 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 what song am I going to get, get requested then? It's got to be one of the ones I sing, isn't it, from the 80s or something. You know, ELO. Sun is shining in the sun. See how the sun shines brightly. It's stuff raining. Hold on a minute. Oh, it's almost a funky shot there, was. No, 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 funk. Funk that one up. Oh yes, Spitfire. Yes. Um, yes. No, but that's not good. That's not. No, not no, no, no. Yeah, it is right. It is right. It is right. But but it, well, it, it's too modern. You want something 1980s, 1990s, didn't you? Anyway, whatever. saying the mayor of Fresno, California is Jerry Dyer, isn't it? Off 
a denari for me life story. Here, but this bloke won't haggle. Won't haggle. I would be honoured if um, I would be honoured if if YouTube gave me a copyright strike for me singing L ELO or anything to be on to be honest with you. John Green have not seen the Air China's and Triple Seven for a while, no. Usually, of course, they're uh, 350, 330 from time to time. Uh, the Dreamliner as well. Um, but I, uh, I much prefer this beautiful 777. I wonder if we're going to see the, um, the trim stab, um, trim stabiliser be um, put back to the neutral position. You can see just below the front leading edge of that trim stabiliser is a little... Um, a cleaner patch underneath it um, when they sometimes they'll leave it in fact that's I think that might be um, sometimes they'll leave it looks like it's moving in the upper position is it or is that into neutral down uh, that may have been trimmed out um, I'm looking to see it move down into a more neutral position there but sometimes they'll leave it as it is and then trim it when they um, when they're fully loaded with fuel etc etc all the weights on board will um, determine the trim of the head of plane of the uh, horizontals Yeah, so um, that was a question that I was going to ask, actually, um, Mr. Emu, as to whether or not that... I know that during flight, that trim will uh, automatically move up and down depending on the, uh, the, um, the attitude of the plane, because the key is to keep the aircraft at the right attitude. Uh, to develop to, to, to deliver the optimal um, flight envelope in terms of the uh, the, the the angle of attack uh, to give it the best fuel numbers as it can give. Row Alarm Boeing's have trim switches in the control yoke. No auto trim unless it's on autopilot. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about on autopilot during during flight, during the flight when it's on autopilot. Um, it's auto trims. Uh, so yeah, interesting. 
yeah, there is that trim button, isn't there, on the uh, on the Boeing? She got a, she's got her APU running, hasn't she? Penny Haskins loves the Qantas livery. Well, the wind has dropped right down. Well, it's dropped right down, but it's uh, it's definitely. Uh Nicholas Laurent, I think it is. This is my world 320 here. Big Jet TV. We're live twice a week, Wednesdays and Sundays, folks. And um, we also travel overseas with our members, Europe and further, intercontinental shows with our first and superclass members. Go on, son! Yeah! switch out here folks I had a little issue with the microphone right at the beginning of the show before we went live uh, but it was a reboot oh. okay so this is I think this is Qatar's 359 isn't it I have a little look at the winglet So this is one of the older winglets, is it? Oh, it's a newer one, right, okay. Okay. Okay, well. 
Oh wow, MSN number 92, wow. Funky! Yeah. Um, yeah, let me just... Dead for a second, folks. Now. Just make sure you double check. Um, okay, let's just give us that come back on. Is that, is that back on? Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Why doesn't this uh, mic have a. Um... That's interesting. That's a different. That's a different. Uh... That's a different mic output. Just double check if this, uh... That's a bit loud, isn't it? Okay. Check, 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 check. See ya, mate. Big gala. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got me feet from flapping about. Oh, come on, mate. Get in there, son. In you go, mate. In you go. Go on. In you go. Has that worked? Has that worked? Come on. Identical. Identical. It's got a pop shield on it for crying out loud. <laughs> Yeah, we're not amateurs, man. We do kind of know what we're doing, you know, and... Uh... <laughs> okay, so this is the old winglet. This is the old winglet. Oh, I can... Uh, yeah, okay, we see... This is very, very... See that to me? Is the, uh, is the older one, is the older one more... Yeah, you see, look. Okay, the older one's more curved and pointy. Okay, right, I'm with you. Yes, I can see that. I can see that. That's a very, um, very highly formed curve, isn't it? Uh, on the old, on the older. So that's the older wingtip. So we'd have to wait and see a. Um,
beautiful curve though, isn't it, man? It's a beautiful piece of engineering. There is always that. Uh, did they fit any? Did they retrofit any of the uh, older types with the newer type? Golf Nobby, new A350 winglets from MSN215. Circa 2018. what angle you look at it though as well because um, from that angle it looks very shallow doesn't it but as it turns it becomes more and more curved and there at that angle it's massively curved isn't it so it is a it is an obliquillusion isn't it I think you can get basically you just got to know which uh, which model it is in terms of like the MSN really Serial number, I think that stands for. Kurt Agra. I was thinking we tether the top of the van to the tripod for the camera. I was thinking we tether. I don't know, Kurt. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a mistype. Jeff Cow. Yes. Uh, on that. Yes, except when there. When we're in throttle lock, the airplane was never going to give full power. Airbus would have eventually said, but don't know what you're doing. But right, here's the tow. There's another one I can't quite. There's a conversation that's happening in it that I'm uh, not privy to. Maybe something to do with the uh, 380 having two reverses as opposed to four. Mr. Blue, it's so nice to be with you. Look around, see what you do. Everybody smiles at you. La 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 la. Andy Marv, Jerry just watching you on World's Deadliest Weather on Five Action. Cool. We're on telly, Jelly. We're on telly.
copyright strike is only done with something that has literally a fingerprint. The actual song you have to be singing, even a karaoke variant of it, uh, you don't get copyright stricken for it struck. Sorry, stricken. They go into London City, don't they? Um, the Lufthansa uh, City jets, you know, the bit like the. Um, I don't know about it. In terms of pilot groups, I guess. Uh, in terms of what flies in here, it's all uh, it's all the same, isn't it? Um, but. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the smaller, you know, the Embraer, the smaller operations, it's a bit of a wine, isn't it? The old Pratt and Whitney, isn't they? Tony Rivers, Vicky Denning, uh, Captain Kirk Island, just read the KLM Air France have ordered 9350s. Big order. Wow, he's bloody good. He's, he's flipping travelling, isn't he? Look at that. Can I see that? That's too quick, man. That's too quick. Whatever that was, look at that. See it going into the cloud there? Or oh, past it? Wow. That's crazy. That was really travelling, whatever that was. I 
I was screaming at you, no, Lufthansa, Lufthansa said Lufthansa below it. And that one there says Lufthansa City Line below it. No idea, screaming emu. Um, no idea, my friend. Um, that beautiful man look at the uh, profile of that jet Marxy 1974 very noisy today love it awesome Ryan out of Stansted CPR saying he's going the wrong way to go to Stansted isn't he look at that he's travelling west wasn't it First A310 flew today in 1982, Brian Stewart saying, wow. Nico, Ryan Air, Jet 2, okay. Oh, going to Bristol, well, that makes sense then, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow, very tippy toes there, look. a um, lowlander saying it was a Mr. Jet. It might have been a private jet, may well have been a private jet because it was leaving a trail behind it of condensation. Steve Black, thank you Steve. No, no, it was going west, it, directly west. There is a there is going to be a Madrid show in the future. Just need need it to dry out a little bit out there so I can get up that bank. Wow! Look at the gate on that thing, man. Those are the carriage. Okay, so I was right. Flaps three for gear down. That's pretty cool. Got that right. Four flaps around 1,500 to 2,000 feet. That's for his aircraft. Adjustment there. Fantastic, thank you. Fly S 
SSC. High winds here in Normandy. The latest any plane in the US anyway can make flap changes is 1,000 feet. After that, you're unstable. Digger, Big Tick TV member. Jeff Cal Colwell, Jeff Colwell. How's his gear down? Flaps three, not necessarily tied together. Yeah, oh, missed that. Eastbound GP. Oh, I can almost, uh, oh, I don't know, that banding around the back of it. Air Belgium, right, okay. They're, oh, what, they're 350 or 330, wow. Yes, 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 it is a 747 that's at, uh, wow. What's ever happened to their 350s? Are they still at 330 Neos? Is it they're still moaning about them, are they? Gnome Lander, giving a shout out to Digger uh, and thanking him for the membership. There you go, isn't that nice? Thank you, Homelander. Gnome Lander, sorry. Aidan Campbell, Etihad 380, now in Essex airspace. Mark Winchak, thank you, Mark. Confirming that as being Air Belgium's uh, 330. documentary about Virgin 350 acquired in October 2014 for an upper class seat. I think manufacturing cost was £300,000 per seat. Insane money, isn't it, that you have to recoup before you start, um, you know, making money on these on these aeroplanes. Um, freight plays a big part. Talking of CRJs. Oh, yes, you will, and all you want. Oh, yes, you will, and all you want. You will, you will, you will. Quite speedy, isn't it? ERJ145 Lloyd Bell, thank you. Same sort of thing, really, isn't it? Miss Malone. Screaming in! Unless you had your anti-ice on and it bumped your power up. Darren Nichols, that Air Belgium overhead was Hong Yuan Group 330 freighter from CVG to Brussels. Okay, same as their 747 uh, that we've always seen parked up at Brussels.
16 minutes with a 380. I think so, yeah. Now, folks, we are, um, of course, we're going to be back on Sunday. <laughs> going to see what happens Friday. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Depends on what we're doing. Um, but uh, there may be a show Friday evening, <laughs> whether it's just from the garden or whether it's, uh, you know, I was thinking that it's just, we should just do it like uh, raw or uh, un unscripted or off the cuff sort of like show with with no pre no plans or anything like that just make it up as we go along i think people prefer that a uh, special greg 100 is a brand new member welcome special greg you're very special mate. thank you so much oh okay what special greg watching from uh, from the airbus facility Broughton or Howarden or Hawarden or always get it wrong, someone always correct me. Gel, where do aircraft tyres go to die? Are they shredded to make new ones remolded or just destroyed? Well I'm guessing that at some point in time um, an aircraft tyre will, um, um, uh, you know, come to the end of its life cycle. However, most of the business in aircraft tyres is remoulding, um, and that is literally it. These uh, these things are, you know, they're really tough, man. I mean, the sidewall thickness is incredible because it needs to be to avoid, you know, um, punctures or, uh, or, or or anything uh, breaking through the sidewall. Uh, and of course the tread itself is the remolded section. Very, very sophisticated way of, um, of remolding these tyres and it's very, um, very tough when it's new, of course. Oh, sorry about that. Somebody else asking what camera we use, Jilly. Do you want to put them straight? Hello. No. Oh, Daryl Nichols. Did I call him Darren again? <laughs> It was good while it lasted. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Oh, it's funny, man. How long is it going to be? <laughs> Watching on the big screen at Chocks Away Diner. Yeah, Chocks Away Diner's at, uh, at Hawarden, isn't it? Is this the... Um, Um, Asiana. Is this Asiana? Chest white. Fair play. <laughs> yeah. We get them along every now and then, don't we? Get our waste and strays coming. We do get them. Aidan Campbell, thank you, sir. Gifted a membership. Asiana 359 from Seoul in Korea. Um, Korea, insincere. See, look, it's. Uh... Apricot crumble. <laughs> vehicle there it looks almost like a VW van didn't it old VW van but it isn't or some French bloke selling onions or something I don't know but it just doesn't look like the normal sort of 
like um, a vehicle that you get on the air side, is it? Um, anyway, whatever. <laughs> Nigel Davies, it was a great show in your back garden. Well, there we go, you see. Eight minutes out, airtime Irish, thank you. Carol Smith. Hamad Khan. Damn! What will happen to Adriana's fleet when they merge with Korean Air? Well, I'll be honest with you, Dan, I think you'll find... Well, I don't know. It's a good question because you would have thought that you wouldn't really want to... You know, when, when you merge, it's... It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because you don't want to spend a whole load of money on rebranding and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then again, you're sort of like, you know, if you're one particular carrier and you are buying out, are they merging or um, what's the deal uh, around that? Melanie, there we go. It does look like an old uh, uh, pizza delivery van, doesn't it? Uh, Lowlander commercial, commercial airline tyres last for about two to four hundred landing on, landings on average. Uh, well, there we go. Before they need to be uh, remoulded, I'm guessing. <laughs> J Mank, I don't call him anything else but that. Is it J Man C or something like that? I don't know. Uh, but he doesn't mind. Get it, always get it. Yeah, Dante, what will happen to Asiana's fleet when they merge with Korean Air? Well, who's the who's the big who's the big instigator in that whole merger? You know, is it Asiana that are taking over Korean, or is it um, uh, are they going to um, just join forces and keep the you know keep the same aircraft and keep the aircraft in the same? I don't know. I don't really know. Is it uh, what's happening? Who am I? Where am I? What's going on? Gordon Freeman. Japanese dock delivery truck, yes. All sorts of different um, uh, uh, things coming out there. <laughs> Oh, I've never seen I've never seen vehicles like it. Um, most amazing place, Japan. Amazing place. Amazing people. Very polite, honourable. Um, What's the Zig? Ziggy Stardust. So we're hearing it from uh, Xiong Hyung Lee uh, that Korean will be the majority shareholder as they have always been the biggest carrier to start with. Logically, Korean Air take 63% uh, stake in Asiana. Okay, so, well, that is the big question now is what will happen to um, the Asiana jets? All be merged to one carrier, being Korean Airlines. These guys have just uh, literally flown their last 747 um, service, haven't they? A week or two ago. Oh, it's okay. Interesting. Russell, uh, um, British Airways 777-200 ER from Mumbai on fire. That might have been it. Miles behind on the comments. Sorry, folks. Gary Lyons spent a couple of weeks in Japan. Last 
September. Great place, amazing place, I have to say. Amazing, hosp hospitable people, aren't they? Is that the right word? Kathy Williams just seen EY17 over my house in Greenwich. Fly SSC1 saying it's a nice picture, thank you. I do kind of rely on that sort of like every now and then a little bit of, you know, um, confirmation that it's all looking and sounding good. Uh, screaming Emi, there we go. Uh, loves uh, Japan. Yeah, most amazing place. Gotta be honest though. Of all the people, um, of all the places in the world, that if I was told where do you want to live, it would be it would be Australia, mate. It would be Australia. I don't know if the um, I don't know if they all seem to be the same from wherever they are. You know whether they're from the northeast, south, or west of Oz. Um, easy, son. Easy, easy, easy. Oh. oh, oh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So they are going to be rebranded then. Wow. So this may become Tutware. Four Fountain Lady Hole. She should be over that Tutware. And there she is. There's our closeout, folks. That's the. Uh... So oh, Honolulu. Hmm. Yeah. Honolulu could be a problem um, in terms of connectivity. That's the look at that random plane up there that's obviously uh, just um, coming from somewhere is now uh, heading towards the um, it's either come out of the out of some kind of a hole or something. I, I, If our railways were as good as Japan, well, maybe in a thousand years, but it's never going to Nope, bloody useless. Bergwis, good afternoon to you. Hello, Poppet TCB. Dan, always wanted to go on the bullet trains in Japan. Yeah. So, uh, come on, camera, come on, son. Okay, we uh, we shooting for number one for the 380, are we? Lucy Roberts managed to see bits of the show. Thank you, everybody. You've been great today. Um, like I say, we'll see what happens on Friday. Might just do an impromptu Friday night show. Um, or uh, early evening show, should I say. Or evening show, whatever. <laughs> One thing's for sure, like clockwork, as um, you can rely on us to be here on. Uh, here's another one, look. Here's another one um, that's obviously uh, just either making its way out of the hold, or is that Kenya? Is that um, Kenya Airways? I think that's the Jambo Jet in it. Um, going out. Oh, he's gone out, is he? Oh, okay, fair enough. She's number two. Come on, folks, let's get her to number one.
哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒She's number one. She's number one. And take much, does it really? Here she comes. Not when you've got six odd thousand people watching, and um, a high percentage of those have got uh, have have got flight radar 24 actively. What was that? Boards came up on the uh, on the left hand wing there. No, it must have been hot keys. Am I seeing boards coming up there? Speed brakes. No, it is an optical illusion, isn't it? You wouldn't see them from this angle. I just thought it was for a second there. 1,848 people tracking this jet right now. I don't know, we didn't, we didn't do it, Steve. You guys did it. Sorry about that. It's a bit wallowy, isn't she? Look at that rudder, mate. A 380 going out at the beginning of the show and a 380 coming in at the end of the show. How about that, folks? Oh, Acorn Revival's just come in, and he? What's that, mate? Oh, <laughs> cheers, man. Thank you. Fella from Rwandair's just turned up and give me a, randomly given me a, 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 a baseball cap with Rwandair written on it. Thank you very much indeed. That is cool. Thank you, sir. Right, folks. Well, that's your lot, isn't it? Thanks, everyone. It's been great, isn't it? Hey, haven't we had fun uh, once again? Hope, hope you uh, enjoyed it. And uh, thank you to everybody who's joined as well. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you're more than welcome to. Uh, come in and enjoy the fun. We're live twice a week, Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, if we're not overseas, um, as we will be at the end of this month in Anchorage. We've got to deal with it, actually, haven't we? We've got to sit down and nail that down next week uh, for Anchorage. But thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for your feedback. Thank you to everybody who gives us information during the show as well. We don't want to have all this stuff on the screens, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, it works for some people. If they want to um, do that way, that's fine by me. Um, but uh, for us, we like that integration. Um, interaction, sorry, with, um, uh, but anyway, uh, no, it's not, interaction, it is, um, but thank you, everybody, we, yeah, we integrate you, to your radar you, so you are interacting and integrating your radar uh, communications, etc, etc, thanks to all our pilots as well, who've, uh, who, who come in and give some great, 
um, info on flying and um, yeah really enjoyed it thank you so much may see a Friday folks so keep an eye out for no notifications if you want to follow us like I say uh, go on to YouTube and um, and uh, subscribe to the channel hit your little notification bell as well because there's no point in following a channel that you're keen on watching again if you don't put your notifications on because then you don't know when they're live next do you um, so uh, make sure you do that and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks folks, thanks Jelly by the way. And uh, Trish, I think was there today. Thank you everybody. Look after yourselves and we'll see you um, in a bit next time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, there we go. What a fantastic day once again. <laughs>